All right, guys and girls, like I promised, I've got some carrots. I've only got about a pound here, about a half a bag. And I'll go in there and take a look at forest. Now, we are well into the rut. We are well into the rut. And so it's a little dangerous. There he is. He knows I'm coming. See, he comes over at the gate. He knows I'm coming, but he, uh, he's, uh, he knows I've got a few carrots. I probably should have brought a bigger bag than this. It's just something that I had in a bag. Probably not quite a pound, maybe three quarter pound, but I'll, I'll come back and feed him some more. Now in this particular enclosure right here, this is where we put the babies. This is where we put the babies. And, uh, and we've, got, we've got a few babies right here. These are the ones that we let go. You can see them laying off over here. They're laying over in the shade, taking it easy. Uh, we've got, I think one of them got into that other pen. I left that other pen halfway open and one of them got back over there with four. So one of the babies are over there. But you can see we got the babies in here. I think we've got five of them. There were, was six of them. There's five of them in here now. You can see they're perfectly happy. They're not going to get caught by a coyote. Uh, we've caught three coyotes and one bobcat. But, uh, but these babies are safe right now. We're probably not going to let them go until, well, for sure, after the rut. I don't know exactly how long I'll keep them in here until they get a little bit bigger and can get away from, get away from those uh, coyotes a little bit more. All right, we're going to go over here. Now, I'm going to get in a pen with Forrest. And, and listen, guys, I know that y'all have, uh, have told me, y'all have told me about getting in the, in the pen with these deer and, and how dangerous it is, and, and I'll, I'll be the first to admit it is dangerous. And uh, every year we read about, you look at the, that's, he's, you know, really a, a beautiful 10 point deer. And uh, you read about every year some deer breeder getting killed in a pen with a big buck. And uh, I'm gonna get in there with him, and, and it is dangerous, but you look right here. He's not dangerous at all right now, but when you're in here with him, what you gotta do, what you gotta do is you gotta really, you have to really, uh, all right, get on back there a little bit, boy. What you have to do is, is you have to, you have, you have to really uh, watch their attitude, watch how they are. I'm gonna get in the pen with Whitey over there as well, and, uh, take a good look at him here in a minute but you have to you have to watch her watch her attitude see how they well, this is what I did the other day I didn't have that around that gate there this gate here has no chain on it it's got to be fastened that's how that's how I messed up the other day as a matter of fact and like all of our chains we just have just barely barely reaches that's par isn't it I mean, barely reaches, but uh, but when you get in here, when you get in here with them, come on, Whitey. I mean, uh, Forrest, come on up here, buddy. When you get in here with them, one of the things that that I like to do, <laughs> I like to stay relatively close to a fence. Come on, buddy. Come on over here. Come on here, Forrest. Come here. Come on, buddy. I don't want to walk way over there to you. You're gonna have to come over here to me. And he will, but you watch right now, he's, he's docile. He's in here with, I think, now he's got, actually got six does in here now because there's one yearling in here also with him. And uh, so he's got one, two, three, four, five, six, which you can see he's gonna come on over here and eat carrots. And I want you to take a look at those back legs while he's eating here and, uh, and see how he's, see how he's, uh, how he's healing up. Uh, he's fine, everything's fine, but and you know, he's, he's in the rut and I don't know if we're just taking a chance he's gonna breed these deer. Yeah, he might not, and that will be really heartbreaking if he doesn't. We haven't seen him breed any of them, but uh, he is, uh, hopefully he does. You see, he's still my baby right now. He's licking my fingers and they're getting up here, eating those credits and uh, carrots and really enjoying it. And, but as long as he's in this type of attitude, he's not dangerous at all. But what I like to do is I watch them. I don't turn my back on them in a pen. Do not turn your back on them in a pen because they are uh, opportunistic critters. Uh, they will run and hit another deer from behind. They don't always, uh, you know, just spar with antlers. They'll run and hit another deer from behind, particularly when they're, they're really mad at them. And uh, you can see you got one little baby doe over there. 
and uh, I'm gonna throw some carrots over to those guys. I should have brought a whole bag. Some of y'all sending me money for carrots. I appreciate that. We're buying them. Lots and lots of carrots. I'll bring you some more after a while, buddy. I just wanted to come down here and and uh, you didn't make the, you didn't make the Friday and Saturday night video. No, you didn't. He said, well, "Why not, Jimmy? I was ready. I was here waiting for you. You you got your own video Monday night. Yeah, that's right. Monday night you got your own video. You and and Whitey. All right, that's it. That's it, guy. That's all of them. That's all of them in there. All right. Now I don't want to mess with his horns too much. You can see, just in scratching him, he loves that. But just in scratching him, he's kind of he kind of wants to mess around and just kind of move. See those horns right there. So you got to be careful when you're in here with him. I'm gonna leave him alone. Look at there right there. Now again, I'm not gonna turn my back on him. You just don't want to do that. Now he just wants carrots. He's following me because he wants carrots. And I always when I'm in these pens, always when I'm in these pens, I try to stay close to the fence. That fence is hard to climb because it's an area. This would be a little bit better. Uh, you'd see this squirrel go up a fence real, real quickly if these deer's attitude changes at all. Now he's following me just because he wants the carrots. He's wanting more carrots. I'll bring you some more, buddy. You got plenty of south fresh over there. Now he's decided now, he's finally learned that I don't have any more carrots. So we'll get out of here and we'll go take a look at, we'll go take a look at Whitey. And uh, Whitey will not eat carrots out of my hand, but uh, I'll carry some carrots in there too and we'll see if we can get up real close. I hope you got a look at his back hind quarter legs in there where, they're, where they, uh, they, were, they were injured. Uh, they are healing up really, really good. Actually, actually, I believe there's quite a bit of hair that's starting to grow up over that kind of uh, over those wounds. And uh, you know, I think he's going to be just fine. He's gained some weight. You see his back legs there. The hair is growing back. He's gained some weight. He's certainly not back where he was, but he's got all the South Fresh food he can eat. Plus, I bring him goodies all the time. Apache brings him goodies all the time. Apache uses a lot of his own money to buy carrots and, 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 and apples for these deer. And uh, we love them all. You see the little baby right down here in the fence, how healthy that doe is. She's just absolutely beautiful. And uh, we've got her in here with, uh, with Forrest. Uh, he's got him six, six girls in here, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. Hopefully that injury hasn't affected his manhood. Okay, let's see if we can find Whitey. There he is right there laying down. Uh, with all of his girls, one or two of his girls to see the carrot bag that I'm carrying. Uh, Whitey will not come up and eat out of my hand, but he was coming over here and uh, and actually uh, getting awfully close until he got sick. And once he got sick, he uh, once he got sick, he became where well, he wouldn't didn't want to come up and eat them so much. But we hopefully have doctored him back to to great health again. You can see him just laying down down there. I'm gonna get down a little closer to him and hopefully get him to get up and eat some carrots. Hey, buddy, right there. Forrest is looking over here and seeing this full bag of carrots and saying, golly, Jimmy, why didn't you come over here and why didn't you bring those carrots over here? Why do we want to take a look at your antlers, buddy? You're the star in the antlers video right now. You are the biggest boy that we've got. And everybody loves you so much. Yes, you are a big, pretty boy. You sure are. You surely are, yeah. You want to get up or not, huh? Yeah, get up and let's see what you look like. There you go, pal. How about that? How about that, huh? Did we beat the blue tongue with you? Because I think that's what you had, you and Prince Charming both. I know you got tired of getting shots in your bottom, but, uh, but I, think that, I think that all of that exceed and excellent that we gave you Beat that blue tongue. I think we caught it early enough. We watch these guys, and anytime they look, you see he's been laying down a while. Now he's going to come up here and eat some carrots. That's great. Take a look at those antlers, you know. Again, I haven't really counted for sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. About eight on one side. One, two, three, four, five, six. About eight on the other. About a 16-point deer there. His horns are not remarkably larger than last year, but they are a little bit bigger. Come on over here, girls and guys. And uh, hey, yellow tag. Anybody want to come up here and eat out of my hand? I got lots of carrots. You can see that Whitey's still. Now, we haven't given him a shot in several days because you just don't want to keep on giving him the shots because he seemed like he's getting pretty much back to normal. Now, I don't know if he's paying much attention to these 
these does. Some of them ought to be getting, getting about ready, ready for him to get interested in them. And we haven't really seen him messing around too much in that regard, but you can kind of take a look. And again, now, Whitey would not be any more or less dangerous than Forrest, even though, even though he is uh, a larger deer. He lost quite a bit of weight while he was sick, but even though he's a larger deer, and he's gaining some of that weight back also, even though he is a larger deer, but you look at him, he has nothing dripping from his mouth. Uh, his nose is a little bit shiny, but, but not bad. And, uh, and he, just, he just looks like it, he's, he's, pretty he's pretty close to getting well. Pretty close to getting well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about eight by eight, by eight nine by nine, something like that is what he is. His horns look beautiful there and uh, shining in the sun. Oh, yeah, baby. Now, again, I don't want to turn my back on that. Now, in this pen, I can actually keep, in this pen, I can actually keep a couple, two or three trees in between me and him. Now, I don't know that that would help. I might be able to get in that little bunch of trees right there and get him away until he changed his attitude. But again, you watch him right now. He has no bad attitude at all. He's very, very close to me. He's only two or three foot away. And uh, you can see that he is uh, enjoying those carrots, which is good. That means he's not really bad sick anymore because he's eating well. And uh, again, Apache feeds him carrots and apples and stuff pretty much every day. Deer slipping up here behind me. I've got him now within five feet, uh, probably four or five feet right here as I'm leaning up against this tree. And you can just see how beautiful his antlers are. Uh, He's really went through a, a tough bout there, just like Prince Charming. And we'll go see Prince Charming here last on today's video. This is kind of just a little extra bonus video because we had so much of the wild bucks running around. You can see he's just not got any mean look. He's not got any suspicious look. He's just eating there. And again, like I said, you, you hear about and you see videos and hear stories about a deer breeder in a pen getting killed by a deer every year, or maybe in their yard even. Uh, with a pet deer, you, you hear about that every year. And you may hear about that with me too, I don't really know. If you do, I hope we have it on video for you so you see Jimmy's last stand. But I love these deer so much and actually they love me as well. And uh, he's not really, he's not really uh, in any type of mood or anything that would be aggressive right now. Uh, they get aggressive looking before they get into fights. They, they, they try to bluff some of the other deer, and once they whip a deer or two, they don't ever have to fight them again. And so if he ever got in an aggressive mood, again, I've got trees in here. I can kind of try to keep, um, keep a tree in between me and him and maybe fight him off until I can get to a fence and shinny up that fence and, and, and get away. Uh, probably really ought to have a climbers on a couple, two or three of these T-posts in here. A buddy of mine developed some climbers up in Oklahoma City that you could put on a T-post where you can climb over a, a T-post when you're out hunting. But uh, he's up now within two or three feet, very, very close, and uh, enjoying the carrots that I'm giving him. He almost, he got so close there, he said, I'm a little bit too close to Jimmy right now. So as long as he is in a pretty good mood, we're not gonna worry about him too much. Okay, so there's Whitey. Whitey is just a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Hopefully we have saved him. And again, one of the things that I'm a little concerned with, with all three of our bucks because of their injuries with Forrest and the, he turned around and went the other way. I just didn't want to turn my back on him with him that close. With the injuries with Forrest and the sickness with Snowball, uh, <laughs> Prince Charming, Snowball, Snowball. We got to name one Snowball, don't we? With uh, injuries with Prince Charming and, uh, the sickness, Prince Charming and, and, and Whitey, uh, is I don't know what's going to happen with all our does. I don't know what we're going we're gonna to get out of the deal. Hopefully we get a bunch of big, beautiful babies come springtime. Hi, split ears. Hi, split ears. Hi, Rose. Split ears and Rose is waiting on Jimmy with the carrots. She's already seen the carrots. And this right here is just barely long enough to fasten. Anyway, all right, I got carrots right here, girls. You get back, you get back, you get back. I got carrots, I gotta get the, oh, looky there, looky there, looky there. We come in here to look at Prince Charming. You don't like Prince Charming, do you? He's a beautiful deer. You've never seen a deer like him. 
running around anywhere. He's beautiful. Yeah. Be, be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. Everything's going to be okay. Yeah. Looky there. What you doing? Huh? What are you doing? And there's Rose over there. I can't get a collar on her. How you liking your collar? You got it pretty dirty. Yeah. All right. We're going to go take a look at it. We're going to go take a look at Whitey. We didn't come in here to look at you. She said, well, you're going to have to. You're going to have to, and you're going to have to feed me that whole bag of carrots. I want to give some some of these carrots to to Prince Charming. Yeah, if he will if he will eat them. Now, the same deal, I don't know how aggressive white deer are. I've never heard of an albino deer killing somebody. But, but again, he's still a buck, and it is a rut. And... Uh, I, I tell you what, guys and girls, I really believe, I really believe that, uh, that, that Prince Charming had the blue tongue. I mean, he, was, he had all the symptoms, all the symptoms. And, uh, and we started giving him shots, antibiotic and Exlon, and, uh, and I think we've cured him. You look at him right now, he's not dripping. Uh, his no eyes are not red. He doesn't have any red around his mouth. Hey, buddy. Hey, how about that? And uh, he's just looking, looking a lot better. Hey, get that right down there, right down there by him. Now he will eat out of my hand, even even with me in in with him. He'll eat out of my hand. As a matter of fact. But he's being pretty lazy right now. He did pick that carrot up, meet it. I can't, I can't. This is like, this is like a game of pitching coins or something. I got to get it close to your mouth because you you won't get up and eat it. I've got that one right under him. He'll be able to smell that. I've only got about a pound, so you're not going to get too many of them, Prince Charming. You could get up. You could stand up, lazy boy. <laughs> Split ear says, hey, look, look at that. Rose's going to go right up there beside him and eat carrots three or four feet away from him. Hey, guy. Hey, guy. You going to get up? Are you going to get up, huh? You want to get up? Here, come here. Come here. Come here. Look at here. Come here. That's my boy. Oh, yeah. Look you there. Now, you see Split ears run off. She's afraid of him. And uh, she, he's not pretty at all to her. Looky here. But he is eating. She's saying, this is really bad. Not only do I like, don't like him, he's eating all my carrots. He's eating all my carrots. Now, this is a great sign right here because what, when he was really bad sick, I could not do this at all. And you see now, I'll bring you all some more. He doesn't have any red around his eyes. Her eyes are bright and clear. There's no anything in them. He's eating those carrots and just being just absolutely fantastic. We've got his antlers out here in the, in the sun now. You can see he's, uh, he's limping a little bit. He's limping just a little bit there and uh, maybe they're all gone. He left a couple up here. I dropped one there. You, f you already found it. There's a couple more up here you can go get. Look at here. Look at here girl. Look at here. Hey. Hey. All right, here's one. No, oh, she said, I found one down there. There's one. But he is looking really, really good. And again, you know, he can be very, very dangerous because he's a big 200-pound-plus deer. Uh, he, he lost just a little bit of weight while he was sick, but he's gained most of that back, it appears. And he just looks absolutely beautiful, just absolutely spectacular. He's been showing a little interest in the does, but these two does right here, honestly, especially Split Ear, is afraid of him. And I know Split Ear had two really beautiful babies last year. As a matter of fact, both of her babies are in the other pen over there with, uh, with Casper and Ice and little Whitey and another little buck. Four does and four bucks in that other pen over there. And, uh, but he's looking pretty good, and he's actually walking good. He has no, no hump in his back at all. What you say, Rose? What do you say, Rose? Huh? Huh? What you say? You see, he's kind of interested. He's kind of interested in, in Split Ear, but Split Ear is not interested in Prince Charming. 
He is not interested in Prince Charming at all. Prince Charming might be big and beautiful and unusual, but she doesn't dig him. She doesn't dig him. And she, he doesn't turn her on at all. All right, guys and girls. That'll wrap up this extra edition. <laughs> the extra edition of Antlers uh, here on a Monday night. Uh, it, we just had so much footage from being out in the woods. We're going to try to be out in the woods a little bit more. And what about, what about that buck swimming that lake and getting, getting outrun by a doe and totally losing her? Like I said, girls, you want to get rid of a guy? Learn how to swim and become a great swimmer. Guys and girls, have you a great one out there this week. We've got more videos coming almost every single day on Jimmy and Chris Houston's Twin Eagle Ranch. And remember, I sure do love you.